Good evening and happy Friday. Welcome to another episode of the NAACP Chicago West Side Branch. I'm your host, Tara Levy. And I am Jamesia Banks. And this evening we'll be talking about a very pressing issue in our community, and that's dismantling the prison, the school to prison pipeline. Mm -hmm. So why is this important? The facts show that there's a great racial disparity in incarceration. In 2014, African Americans constituted 2.3 million, or 34% of the total 6.8 million incarceration population. African Americans are incarcerated at more than five times the rate than whites. And the imprisonment rate of African American women is twice that of white women. It goes on to say that nationwide, African American children represent 32% of children who are arrested, 42% of children who are detained, and 52% of children whose cases are judicially waived to criminal court. And though African Americans and Hispanics make up approximately 32% of the U.S. population, they comprise over half of the incarceration people as of 2015, and I imagine that this rate is rising. So. This data begins in schools, when our babies are just in elementary school. That starts with them being out of school, them being removed from class. And that makes them think that, you know what, my education doesn't matter. My input there doesn't matter. What do you think, Ms. Banks? I think that the school to prison pipeline system, I think that is a very factual thing, such as having metal detectors in your schools, such as making kids... Um, just behave in a way like talking to them very disrespectfully, making them thinking that's okay for people to talk to you like this, for you to be treated that way. Um, the lunch menus, you know, or just how it's not funded. You know, if kids do not have after school programs, if they do not have good extracurricular activities or good teachers that are willing to, you know, take the time out to help them, they will become bored in school. They will become uninterested in what we have to talk about. If history is not talking about me or someone that looks like me, you know, what representation do I have to keep mm -hmm. me focused? So therefore I look to stuff is in the, you know, in the streets. Mm -hmm. What's going on? So yeah. I probably would rather not be in school. So that would be my mind if I was, you know, a teenager. So I could see that being very factual. And as an educator, I see too often how black boys especially are constantly removed from classes. Mm -hmm. Instead of having a, a talk to or try to build relationships, we just want to automatically just remove these black boys. So we're telling them that at a young age, we don't want you around. Mm -hmm. That's the message that they're getting. Free Spirit Media also produce a video on the same topic of the school to prison pipeline. Take a look. Evaluation rates in some neighborhoods no higher than 48, 49 percent. My first time being suspended, I was talking back to a teacher. I told the security what happened. They didn't want to listen to my side of the story. They just got me out of there. And then I got loud with them because I felt like I wasn't being heard. Like they didn't give me a chance to speak. If I'm only always get in trouble and they're going to just send me out, send me out, I might as well just do them a favor and not come back. In general, when we look at suspension rates and the climate of the school, we find that schools with higher suspension rates tend to have worse climates, lower reports of safety compared to schools that serve similar students that don't suspend students as much. Suspending us for walking out of the classroom, using the bathroom and chewing gum, pushes us out of school and creates the system called School of Prince Pipeline, which pushes Latino and African-American youth out of school and onto the streets, where they're most likely to participate in crime. My last suspension, 2008, I ended up getting into more trouble as far as being away from school, being out on the streets, hanging with friends and stuff like that, uh, or what I thought were friends, and um, ended up getting incarcerated. Like, I had people tell me, like, you're going down the wrong road. You're going down the wrong road. You're going down the wrong road. You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. Okay, well, what should I be doing? What can you do to help me do what I need to be doing? 
Feels like the schools used to train us for factories, now they train us for jails. Feels like I swear to God they're laughing as I stand here crying. Feels like a trick, feels like a trap. Feels like do we have a right to an education or not? When you have schools losing young people to the prison system, which costs way more to incarcerate them daily than it does to educate them, you do really need to see how it is all affecting everything. Why don't we put the millions of resources we throw in this jailhouse, why don't we put that back in the community? In 2010, Voice did research and found out that CPS was spending $51.4 million on school-based security guards and cameras, but only $3.5 million on college and career coaches. That's saying that they think that we are like troubled kids that need constant security guards and constant watch. It's a terrible message to give to kids. And you know what? It's given to uh, under-resourced African-American and Latino kids. They don't want in Winnetka. These high suspension rates disproportionately affect youth of color. So we see here that out of all the out-of-school suspension rates, black children overwhelmingly are the majority. We see here that 75.8%, almost 76% of black students are suspended, percentage of suspendants. That's as of 2009, but data shows this is still a, a current issue in both public school and in charter schools. Over 80% of black students make up the expulsion. So what does that say? What does that say to black children? What does that say to policing black children at young ages? That, that, that's already ingrained in them that we don't value your education, we don't value your future. And I believe that, especially for impoverished neighborhoods, education is the way out of poverty. Mm -hmm. Education is the way to level the playing field. And if you don't have that, you just continue the cycle of impoverishment. What are your thoughts? I completely agree. I believe when you say, what does that say? That's a good point of what I am speaking on representation. So if your representation is that you are just shown that your older black brothers or black sisters are going to jail, they're getting pregnant, they're not being responded to when they are asking for help, that is just shown that this is a life that you are to carry out. And as you said, that knowledge is power. It's empowerment to break out of this systematic oppression that is ingrained in our everyday thoughts. This stuff is normal. It, sh it shouldn't be considered normal, but society has made it so normal that people have become unresponsive to mm -hmm. even believe that it is a school to pipeline, school to prison pipeline system. And it was a good point that in the video, it stated that it costs so much to send a kid to jail than to educate them because it's private jails that want people to be in their jail so they can get paid for the occupancy. So it is a reason why, you know, it's a school to prison pipeline system. There's no reason for you to graduate if you're going to just go to jail. We can pay for you that way, you know. So I definitely agree with the video and I definitely agree with the knowledge is power. Again, and there's also data that shows that students receiving Students receiving out of school suspension overwhelmingly are mostly black boys and then second are black girls. So we're policing our children at earlier rates. And they be they think it's normal to be policed. So normal questions is you have to question yourself now before you leave your home because you are so used to becoming policed. Should I wear my hair mm -hmm. this way to school? Should I not talk too deep with the bass in my voice? Mm -hmm. Should I move differently than I how I normally move because I'm so used to being police? It becomes just a normal action when it's not normal. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, especially when we're dealing with children from already tough neighborhoods, 
I think that the staff and the teachers should be sensitive to some of the issues that our children are facing. They can't just come in as students and drop whatever they're going through from the outside and say, you know what, I'm here, I'm ready to learn. Our kids may have some baggage. Our kids may be experiencing trauma. And if that may be the case, restorative justice would be the way. Establishing relationships to be the way in order to get through the kids to show that you care and not just, you know, issue harsh disciplines right off the bat. Because that isn't creating a more of an intense problem than any solution. Definitely agree. And it is very important that we just keep up with the representation we want to address. I also do want to address the fact we have to address the teachers in this situation as well. It can be teachers that have never even seen a black person or haven't even been in a setting, but they just got their degree and they got hired at Chicago Public Schools or a very different neighborhood. And the way that they talk to some children, the way that they may encourage them or discourage you know, some children, that has to be addressed as well because teachers are such major influences in a young child's life because that's who you are with eight hours of the day you know your teacher and how your teacher talks to you can be thoughts that are ingrained in your brain mm -hmm. so we want to make sure that we address the fact about teachers making sure that they are here for your students as well to see them succeed absolutely and we're also curious to hear what our viewers are thinking what are your thoughts uh, you can chime in on the conversation now at 312-738-1060 again it's 312-738-1060 we're here and just open to hearing what you all think okay Definitely. and we also mentioned restorative justice so what exactly does that look like we have another graphic to support us So examining the school to prison pipeline. So when we see a problem arise, such as standardized education and punitive discipline, the solution to be cultural relevant social justice education. So if we are informing ourselves of trauma um, informed programs such as restorative justice, such as peace circles, we're able to get to our kids and not police them at such extreme rates. If we see an issue with our culture, a problem such as oppression and violence, the solution should be, again, restorative. So youth expression and youth culture. Let the students have that space and that comfort to express themselves and to have a voice in the school. And what we see with juvenile justice, if the problem is youth incarceration and brutality, the solution should be detention and abolition of Detention, abolition, and transformative justice. So not just sending our students to detention centers, but also just giving them that space again to let them express some of their grievances and to hear them out. And this also is Veterans Day weekend. So we want to show our gratitude to all the veterans out there. Thank you for your service. Thank you very much. And this all goes into making sure that we're, we express our voices by voting for our officials. Mm -hmm. Our officials lead our schools. Our officials lead our prisons. And if we elect officers who really believe in the community, who really believe in uplifting our youth and believe in the power of schools, then we'll be on the same page and have that restorative justice established. Definitely. And I do want to bring up that you, by the voting, we should definitely... Um discussed that we are very proud of the people that did go vote this week and we want to give a special shout out to Stacey Abrams even though stuff haven't been going a bit windy down south you know we yeah. are just hoping for the best so absolutely I just wanted to bring that up and I just want to thank everyone for showing up and showing out to vote because vote is voting is just so absolutely and shout out to chicago millennials mm -hmm. those ages 25 to 34 we were running to the polls made such a great demographic of people out there to vote so we're looking good y'all keep it up very much mm -hmm. very proud we're representing you guys so
All right, well, if we don't have any callers for this evening, we'll wrap up our conversation. We thank you all for listening and to tuning in yet again for another night. Have a blessed Friday evening and a wonderful weekend. Thank you. And we are the NAACP Chicago West Side Branch. I am Jamesia Banks. And I am Tara Levy. All right. Okay, before we wrap up, let's just answer this one phone call. Okay, caller. Hi, yes. Oh, uh, you guys went off the air. I don't hear you guys on the air. Oh, there you go. I see you now. But uh, I believe you guys are totally right. They do have a, a school-to-prison pipeline, and I believe that's because the powers that be want the killing to continue and they have two birds they're killing two birds with one stone one is it's because big business is making money off the especially the kids especially minority kids go straight from school to prison they're gonna make, get prison labor and it's gonna you know make their pockets fatter and also they're helping keeping some minorities down and keeping them ignorant and keeping them like separated from the mat you know from everyone else and so it's like uh, that's why the NRA won't pass. Well, that's why the NRA gets such support from big business and everything because they do not want to pass gun control. As we see the events that just recently happened in Los Angeles, it's like this crazy. But they won't do that because less guns equal less criminals, and they need the criminals, especially minorities, to help feed the pipeline in order for them to get all their money from the prison labor. You know, so it's like, why not, you know, get some these minority kids from school to prison also to help feed that? And that's what I think. Definitely. Thank you so much. We definitely agree. And that is a great point. Very valid point that you yes. brought up about guns. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, I do want to make a fact proven. There has never been a gun shooting in the hood. I just want to say that. So I do want to make a point proven with that. And I do agree with what he was saying about the NRA. It's just, it's an everyday situation. You know, we're just stating what's going on, day-to-day mm -hmm. -day lives. This is just what's going on. And we're stating out the obvious, what everyone is considering to be normal. This is just the real. Again, thank you, caller, for chiming in and part of the conversation. We'll open the floor a little bit later so we won't, you know, missed the opportunity to hear from other callers. We thank you for calling in. We're here at 312-738-1060. Call us now. Call me now. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we don't have any callers, we'll wrap up the second time, for real this time. And you're welcome to join us for our monthly general body meetings. The next one will be December 1st at 5820 West Chicago Avenue, Chicago, Illinois. And that's at 1 p.m. at San Kofa. Thank you again for another night. Hope you all have a wonderful weekend.